good morning from the Drury Plaza Hotel here on Hotel Plaza Boulevard, just steps away from Disney Springs. We're here today because they invited us out to do a little tour, show us some of the rooms, but we're gonna do a full tour of the hotel and give you guys everything that you need to know about staying here. After learning some information about this hotel, I'm quite intrigued about it. First things first, no resort fee. This is an official Disney hotel, meaning that you can get into the, into the resorts, into the Disney parks 30 minutes earlier, depending on which one's scheduled for that day. And you get all of the amenities that you would get staying at a Disney resort, but you're not paying the Disney resort prices. The prices here are remarkably good. After looking it up, for example, we are going to tour a two queen room with a terrace and a view, and that room for tonight is $240 a night. Not bad at all compared to the actual Disney resort prices. Also, no resort fee. There is a $25 a night parking fee, uh, but they do also allow you to bring dogs for an extra fee or animals, pets. So if you have a, a family pet that travels with you, you can bring it here. Uh, there's just like size limitations and it costs, uh, and there's a fee per night for the animal. So one last thing that I wanted to say before we go in is that this is a historic location in that this particular building that, that Drury has bought and remodeled and refurbished and everything completely gutted and redone was built in 1971 as a travel lodge. One of the first hotels around the Disney area. And not only that, but right next door is the Athletic Student Union. And that is the original preview center for the Magic Kingdom, for Walt Disney World is right next door. So you're in a historic area. It's really neat. So let's go inside and have a look around. So as we are heading in, you can see there is a sign here that says Disney Shuttle Stop because they do offer their own bus service to the parks. You do have to make a reservation. You don't have to make a reservation. They highly recommend a reservation because if the bus is full and you don't have a reservation, they're not gonna let you on. But they do do everything in their power to get you to the parks. So let's head inside. So as soon as you walk in, you're greeted with the check-in desk. And the first thing that you would do if you were staying here is you would check into your room. So let's head up and have a look at some of the room options. We're going to tour a two queen room with a terrace and a view. The view being fireworks view. Not a real close view of the parks, but you can see the fireworks from the balconies. And the second one being a king two bedroom suite. So. Let's have a look at those. We're going into room 1231. And right here, as soon as you walk in on the right, we've got a ironing board, an iron, a modular unit that they put in to kind of create a little bit more space. That's the closet. Every room has a safe, a microwave, and a refrigerator. Coffee maker with some USBs in the wall. You know I love that. Uh, each room has two sinks too. So there's one here and then right behind me in the bathroom, there is another sink. Of course, hair dryer, commode, and a walk-in shower with Nourish a spa line amenities here. And this is a sliding door so you don't lose any space in the bathroom. Then we've got two queen-size beds in this particular room. Oh, and it tells you who the housekeeping service person was. And then you've got an alarm clock here with plugs and two USBs on it. Oops. And then it looks like, is there a little bit of storage? Or, no, no storage underneath the beds, but there is lots of storage back here. More USBs and more plugs. A dish network that they use for their television here. And then this particular room has a balcony with theme park view as well as pool view. So right now we're looking directly at Magic Kingdom. So you'll be able to see the fireworks from here and see the Epcot fireworks, which is always a unique experience if they're both going off at the same time. And we're just steps away from Disney Springs too. So we're heading into room 1016, which is a king two bedroom suite. And the first room that we come into has a pull out sofa with a queen size bed in it. And the representative here was like, you could probably fit three kids on there because there would be two sleeping on the queen size area. And then maybe one would sleep over here. And then if we turn in this direction, 55 inch TV, coffee maker, uh, refrigerator, microwave, a sink out here. 
And then we head into, it does have an adjoining room. She wasn't sure what the other adjoining room is, but I'm assuming it's a long one just like this. So probably a double queen suite. Bathroom is very large. Sink in here, a lit mirror for you to be able to do your makeup or do your hair in the morning. Commode back there, large walk-in shower. I like that a lot. She did say that there are a few rooms with tubs in them and you can get those on request. And they also have accessible rooms. And then we head back, oh, there's another sink here. So, so far three sinks in this room, another mirror. And then we head into the main bedroom, which has a solid door to close it off from the rest of the room. A large mirror blocking off the closet here with the safe in it, extra bedding, iron, ironing board, two, two layers of hangers, like two for long dresses and maybe like sports coats. USBs and plugs on the side of the bed. Just, oh, on both sides too, there's one over there. Here we said king size bed, 55 inch TV, another mirror, lots of storage over here. We've got more USBs and plugs. Does this open somehow? No. Okay. And this is a room with a view. We can see Epcot straight out there. And then if we turn a little bit to the right, we can see Magic Kingdom. I like it. It's cool. It's modern. It's very nice. Did also want to point out more USBs over top of the bar area here in the front room. Oh, hey, welcome back from those room tours. This is one of the things that blew my mind about this hotel is that the two queen bedroom that we saw with the terrace with a view tonight, it is $240 a night. But if we go to the two room suite with one king and a view, $255 a night. So you get a pretty big room for a decent price here. All right, so back to the main check-in counter and we're gonna be making a left. There is an information kiosk here that gives you some more information about Walt Disney World. It is not turned on right now, but the way that we are headed is we're headed to the Level Up Arcade. Before we get there though, I did wanna mention that 24 hours, free coffee. There's also an ATM over here. Free coffee, free tea, 24 hours a day. You can come down here anytime you want to and get some coffee or tea. There's a concierge here to help you plan your day or to buy theme park tickets if you don't have them already. And then we have the Level Up Arcade. Inside the Level Up Arcade now, lots and lots of games. Looks like we've got Ski Ball over here. Oh, it's bowling, it's not actually Ski Ball. That's exciting. Basketball, what is, is this a, oh, it's not a claw machine. It's one of these though. Just an, a vintage Pac-Man's arcade party. So a bunch of different arcade games. There is a claw machine. This is one of those winner every time machines where you get candy out of it. And we got some plushy claw machine, the Injustice Arcade, Daytona, and then finally some air hockey. And here are the prices for the arcade. $5 for 30 credits, $10 for 60, or $20 for 140 credits, $50 for 401 credits, and $100 for 1,002 credits. And some of the machines vary in price, but say for instance, this motorcycle racing game is six credits. So 1,002 credits will get you a lot of game time. So as we're leaving the level up arcade, we're headed back to the main lobby and there is a lot of seating out here in the main lobby where you can relax while you're waiting for your room to be ready or after you check out while you're waiting for your Uber to show up. And then directly across the way is the marketplace which is their, kind of like their, their snack location. They also have, it's their gift shop. There is a business center here with printers and computers and a large table that you can use. And then inside of the marketplace, they do serve Starbucks coffee here. Various cookies and pastries. And they have just regular drip coffee and they have a self-serve Starbucks espresso machine. So you can make whatever you'd like to make. They have Pizza Hut here, and you can order this through the Pizza Hut app. They should have some around dinner time, kind of a few that are here that you can do grab and go. There's a microwave in here, all kinds of different snacks, and they have merch as well. 
Also, anything that you might have forgotten, you know, swim diapers, contact solution, toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, Q-tips, deodorant, hairspray, laundry detergent, things like that. And then they have you know, drinks, ice creams, burritos. They have a microwave for you to microwave these things. Stouffer's baked chicken, beers and wines. They have various medications back there, you know, Tylenols and things like that. You know, a few Disney things here and there, like plushes that you can buy. Like adult Lunchables here. Ooh, mini melts. Yeah, kind of interested in this chocolate chip cookie though. It looks very delicious. All right, so as we're leaving the marketplace, off to our right over here is the lobby bar. And this is called the kitchen and bar. So you can see this bar doesn't open until five, but there's a full liquor bar. You get beers and wines and things like that. And then they have a dessert happy hour where you can get desserts for $5. It's also the actual kitchen is open late from five until midnight, Monday through Saturday and five until 11 on Sunday. But they did also say that there is the Lakeside Bar and Grill, which is just outside here, that is open now. It opened at 11. Yeah, we got some craft beers back there on tap as well. So from the kitchen and bar, we are turning in this direction and heading to back towards the front desk, but we're gonna go just past it here. And you can see there is the QR code for you to reserve your spot on the Disney shuttle bus. And they have also how long it'll take for it to be back here. So the buses are split into two different schedules, one on the hour, one on the half hour. So you can see like Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios are gonna be here in about a half an hour and then Magic Kingdom and Epcot will be back in an hour. So they must have just left. And they have the location of the buses here on the map. So you can see where the bus is at what time. And there's a bus that goes to Disney Springs too. So the hotel is split into two different towers. There's the Cypress Tower and the Palm Tower. So depending on which tower you're staying in, you will have to take a specific elevator bank for each. Um, and the only exception to that is between the first and second floor, they're connected. But then once you get past the second floor, the two towers are not connected. So there's another ATM back here. And then we are headed towards the conference area. So here there are some restrooms on the way into the conference area. But then this, for the previous hotel that was here, would have been the pool where the conference area is, but they've since removed that pool and built a bigger one outside. There's an area here that's some outdoor seating that's covered with fans. It's called the City Beautiful Terrace. And now we're headed into the conference area. I love the design choices here. I like these lamps. So this conference area is split into two different sections. One's a little bit bigger, one side's a little bit bigger than the other side, but each hall can be split into four different conference rooms, depending on your needs. And you can kind of see that like this side has maximum occupancy of 115 per section of four. And then this side has maximum occupancy of 124, like divided into four sections. So just to kind of explain that a little bit more, you can see the divider here down the center. So this side would be 124, this section would be 124, that section would be 124, and then the last section would be 124. Also, each conference area has little bars back here where you could have coffee set up. And it looks like they have it set up for you. So yeah, pretty neat that they have a little conference section back here. There is a little patio out here behind the conference center that overlooks a little teeny tiny pond back there. And then if you're standing out there, it is possible that you'll be able to see Epcot's fireworks from here, but you can also see them from the pool deck. It's not going to be a non-obscured view because there are hotels and trees in the way, but you can see them. So now we are headed back towards the lobby so that we can see the pool deck area. Back in the lobby area, and we are going to turn and head towards the pools. And we're back here at this map that shows us where the buses are, but I kind of wanted to go through the elevator pack because there's also a set of stairs that lead up to the second level. And one thing that is striking to me that I enjoy a lot is the variety of art throughout this hotel is so unique and Florida. 
and I absolutely love the look of everything that they have here on the walls. So like I said, we're gonna turn over here to the elevator pack, two elevator packs, the Palm Tower and the Cypress Tower, and we are going to go out to the pool deck. So I walk through the elevator pack and you can see you can get to the elevators from either side. We're gonna go outside towards the pool now. And if I look off to my left, there's the conference center that we just were in. And then here's the sign with all the pool rules. Uh, one thing that I thought was interesting is there's a maximum depth of five feet, but there is a sun shelf and it says, be careful because the drop off at the sun shelf is three foot, three inches deep. So you might have a kid on the sun shelf who might make his way to the end of the sun shelf and drop off into deeper water. So just be prepared and be careful for that. So as with all pools, we try to keep it a little bit obscured back there, but it is a saltwater pool. So she should be more buoyant in this pool. And there is also a splash pad that is included in the same thing. It is a heated pool very large pool with a sun shelf and lots and lots of loungers all around it. So from the pool, we're going to turn elevators right through there, lobby just on the other side of this glass here, but there's a lot of tables out back here, a lot of seating as well. Yeah, lots of seating, very plush seating as well. So we walk through the seating area and now we are over in another little seating area with tables and stuff for the lakeside bar and grill. There's more tables to my right as well. There's a lot going on. Complimentary water out here. Let's have a look and see what they have at the Lakeside Bar and Grill. Lots of beers and wines and cocktails, seltzers and ciders, specialty cocktails. And then there's the food side. I like that they call the appetizer stuff the shallow end. Love some smash burgers. Oh, everything sounds so good. And you can also get a nine inch hand tossed pizza from Pizza Hut. Okay, and they have a Beyond Burger too as well. A couple of craft beers over here as well. The City Beautiful IPA with Ariola Fountain on the tap from Orange Blossom. There are also some restrooms out here by the pool and by the Lakeside Bar and Grill. And then there's the Splash Pad, which is not on right now. I've been to splash pads where you have to turn on a timer. And I'm wondering if that's the case here or if it's just not running at the moment. It is kind of wet down there like it was running earlier. So maybe I'll ask at the front desk what's going on because we do have to go back in because we're all done out here and we need to go up to the second level to see some of the other amenities. All right, back inside by the elevator packs. And I did ask about the splash pad. They said there's a button that you push. And once you push the button, everything turns on and all the splashing and spraying turns on and kids will run around and have a good time. So now that we're back inside, we need to either take an elevator or take the stairs up to the second level to see some of the other amenities. So I opted for the stairs. And like I said, this is cool. It's like all of the different areas of center of the Orlando area. So yeah, it seems like all of the artwork is based around either Florida or the Orlando area. So we're at the top of the stairs that went from the first floor to the second floor, and we're at the elevators now. Also, they're playing some Harry Styles, so gotta love that. So we are making a left and heading towards the fitness and guest laundry section. So there are stairs that you can take if you'd like to, if you don't, if you wanna get some exercise, I guess. Speaking of exercise, as we turn the corner, there is a gym right there. But before we get to the gym, there's also guest laundry. So if you need to get some laundry done, plenty of washers and dryers in here. Looks like they're $2 a piece. All right, so let's have a look inside the fitness center. Got some weight machines, some ellipticals, some treadmills, and some free weights as well as towels, disinfectant wipes, and yoga mats, and a filtered cold water fountain. Like I said, ellipticals and some recumbent bikes. All right, so from the fitness center and the guest laundry, we're actually turning back to head towards the elevator pack, and then just on the other side of the elevators. Back at the elevator pack, and this is one of the things that I think makes this particular hotel the most unique thing that I've seen in a while. So this area behind me, is kind of like a cafeteria area. In the morning, they've got breakfast that's included in your stay. 
and we got a chance to have a look at some of the food items that were available for breakfast this morning. So we'll put that in right now. So just off the elevators on the second floor, we've got this area here, which is right now serving the Rise and Shine breakfast. And this is one of the most unique things about the Drury Plaza Hotel is that this breakfast is included in the cost of your room, as well as there's an evening time offering that's very similar to dinner that is also included in your room. So they have a bunch of different stations that all have most of the same thing. So we've got some scrambled eggs in here. You can add some cheese and some uh, pico de gallo. They have a bacon cheddar scramble. Got some breakfast potatoes. Got some Odom's Tennessee sausage. And like I said, there's multiple locations, so all of these are all the same. But then up front here, you've got oatmeal, you've got pancakes. Another thing of pancakes. Thank you so much. And they will serve them to you hot if you'd like. Ooh, yeah. They also have some buttermilk biscuits here. And you can get some pepper gravy. They also have Coca-Cola products, orange juice, cranberry juice, apple juice, decaf and regular coffee, as well as some coffee made like French vanilla here. And this is hazelnut. Yeah. Oh, what's this? And then you could just get hot water to make tea as well. They also have a location down on the first floor called the Kitchen and Bar that has late night ordering. Monday through Saturday, it's open until midnight. And then Sunday, it's open until 11 p.m. And I wanted to point out that this is well lit, bright in the morning, very welcoming and lots and lots of seats. They got TVs in here so you can see what's happening during the day. They're talking about a storm over in Alabama right now. And then we've got some, these are old orange grove bag stickers or bag labels. I'll have to find out when the popcorn is available. There are two popcorn machines here in this area. So the popcorn starts about 4 p.m. each day and the dinner time is called the 5.30 kick pack. That starts at 5.30 and it's like hot dogs, nachos, potatoes, things like that, salads, soups, but there is a changing entree every day. But the mainstays are hot dogs, nuggets, potatoes, salad, soups. There's also a section here that has toasters and various condiments for breads and bagels and English muffins. And then you can get yogurts and fresh fruit as well as various cereals. And they have a dispenser for 2% milk. So each night during the kickback, adults 21 and up get three adult beverages included in the price of the stay. There's also a waffle makers here. This is just a regular waffle maker with the Drury D on it, hot syrup. Or over here, this one is in the shape of a Mickey. Looks like you can get a Bud Light or an Oyster City Dirty Blonde. So not only do they have breakfast, they also have what they call the kickback. And that is where you get, they call it a snack, but it's like hot dogs, nachos, uh, baked potato, soup, salad, and then one entree that changes depending on the day. And then every adult that's 21 and older gets three cocktails included. Three cocktails, like you get either a cocktail Sorry, this is confusing. You either get three cocktails, three beers, or three wines, or you can mix, mix and match. You can get one cocktail, one beer, one wine, whatever you want. But you get three of them included in your stay every day. Included in the cost of your room every day. Breakfast every day, dinner every day, and three drinks every day, as well as popcorn, free popcorn, free coffee. Like, it's kind of blowing my mind, the amenities here like the food amenities alone. One last thing that I wanted to say before I leave is that these water bottle fillers are kind of all over the place in the hotel. So I popped up to the 17th floor after we saw all the amenities because I wanted to give you guys a bird's eye view of the pool and show you what the view could be like. If you're not staying in a room with a view, you could always come to the area here in front of the elevators and see the fireworks. So here's a look at the pool. You can see the sun shelf down there where they were talking about that there's a drop off. It's also a laned pool so that you could swim laps if you'd like to. And there's an overview of the splash pad area as well. And a spa over there, like a hot tub. 
And then as I look around, I can see all kinds of stuff. I can see Disney Springs right there, right away. This is the Athletic Student Union right there. That is the old Walt Disney World Preview Center, first building on property that Disney built. And then if we have a look just past, or just to the right of Disney Springs, looking over top of Saratoga Springs, we can see Epcot right there. You can see Spaceship Earth, the Guardians of the Galaxy building sticking out, and then um, Living with the Land. And then if we turn a little bit to the right, we can see there's the Contemporary, and we can see Tron right there. So this is Magic Kingdom. There's Contemporary and Bay Lake Tower. That's what we're looking at. So just past that is where you'll see Magic Kingdom fireworks. Actually, probably just behind it there. So I came all the way out to the parking lot so you can get a real idea of the two different towers. One thing that they didn't show us while I was here was these top floors on this tower. When we just went up, we went up to the 17th floor. And I don't know what these rooms are up here or what this is at the very tippy top of this tower. And I'm interested to find out. But when I looked up from the poolside, it seemed like they might've still been doing some construction up there. So they might be waiting to unveil something at a later date. So after kind of wandering around this hotel, it really did blow my mind, the, the economic factor of it. Like for the price, you're getting a lot included in your stay. I'm excited, like I wanna stay here now. I, at first, the thought never even crossed my mind, but since I came out here, I'd like to stay here, give it a try. Get the free breakfast, get the free dinner. I don't drink, so I can't have the free cocktails, but like that seems like a good selling point. The pool looked so nice. Walking distance to, to Disney Springs and all of those restaurants, you're within Uber distance of everything. When we were talking to the people here, they said that, so because these buses are provided by Drury, they're not provided by Disney, you do have to make a reservation for the busier times. If it's not as busy of a time, like right now, I'm sure I could get on a bus. If there's room, they won't deny you access if you don't have a reservation. But if there is no room, they will deny you access if you don't have a reservation. You can make a reservation for the bus into two, up to two days in advance or two days before you arrive at the hotel. And But then they told us a story about somebody that was leaving, say, Magic Kingdom late at night. They missed their bus back to the hotel and then rather than having that guest wait another hour for the next bus to show up, they just sent an Uber to go pick them up and they ate the cost of the Uber here at the hotel. That's customer service right there. It's fantastic. So I wanted to say thank you to Drury for having us out and giving us a tour of the hotel. We're definitely gonna be staying here in the future, but all in all, it was a fantastic day. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.